Thank you so much for the warm intro. Uh, so myself, John Matthew. I co-founded ReFI Technologies with five of my friends from school and college in 2013. So these are my five friends and this is my team. So essentially, four of us did the same school and four of us did the same college. So myself and our CTO, Mr. Srinath, we did the school and college. So it's a team built out of friendship. So we have been knowing each other since early 2000s, right? So we understand what is good with certain people, what is bad with certain people, what are the things that certain people don't like, what are the certain situations in which certain people excel really well. So we, the team understands each other and we kind of complement, right? So that's how we gel together as a very good team. So this is a flashback, right? The year is 2011. That is when we start building a technology. We were in our third year of engineering. And we built a process called relational intelligence. So the idea is to basically relate different things, different people, different ideas, all fit together. Now I would like to take a moment of you. It's a question, right? It's an open question. Anybody can answer this one. I want you to find a connection that relates the actress I should arrive, the 1,000 rupee Indian currency note, and the baseball, the game. I should write the actress, the 1,000 rupee Indian currency note, and baseball, the game. How can you connect these three things? Go for it. Yeah, anybody, please. They're all liked by people. Very good. Again, what else? They have good reputation? Yes, yes. The notes especially. <laughs> then, what else? What else do you think is common between the three? All are beautiful? Yeah? <laughs> I, I could say Aishwarya is very beautiful. Yeah. Then, all the others, what do you think is common in these three things? So, for the people who did not answer this one, one of the fundamental reasons you might have chosen not to is because of the fear of failure, right? Fear of failing to get it right. What if I come out and say an answer and it's not the right one, right? What is the guy next, sitting next to me going to think about me? Oh God, he said this answer is such, such bullshit, right? So this is failure, f fear of failure, right? So this is there in the fundamental system. The moment that we are born and then the moment we are brought up in the school, across our college, this fear of failure is being instilled upon us. So I asked this question to an 11 year old nephew of mine and then he immediately came out with this answer. Ah. That is because Aishwarya Rai bought this baseball with 1,000 rupees, right? Then he again said, so maybe she played baseball and then broke a window, right? Maybe she had to pay 1,000 rupees for it. So he had all these wide answers, right? So what we did is, we built this engine called Relational Intelligence Engine. What it does is, it finds patterns from these data and finds connections, right? So going back to this one, so Aishwarya Rai was a brand ambassador for De Beers Diamonds, right? which was one of the largest diamond brands in the world. The Indian currency rupee note, the 1000 rupee note, has a diamond symbol which is used to detect counterfeit. And the baseball game is played on a pitch called the baseball diamond. right? So diamond was one thing that was like kind of common in all the three. But the thing is, there is no right or wrong answer to this question. right? The answers vary from person to person. The way I think of it might not be the way you think about it, that might not be the way the next person thinks about it. So there are so many possibilities. So at ReFI, we try to quantify all these possibilities and provide you the best content based on your likes. So using this relationship engine, we went out and created a cookbook series. Cookbooks are a set of apps on Android. There are 32 of them. So we currently support 21 languages across the world and we are used in 150 countries. So that's what we are right now today. So we were the first cooking app on Android TV, and now we are partnered with Sony in India. So all the Sony Android TVs that come out have cookbook app bundled inside them, right? And this was like our aha moment, right? Every startup, every journey has this aha moment. Ours was on June last year. This was like I get a call at 3.30 in the morning from my CTO, Mr. Srinath. Srinath happens to my guru also. So he calls me up at 3.30. So after several rings, I pick up, and then he says, John, there's this blue shiny thing on our developer page. So I was like, blue shiny thing? Oh my God, the top developer badge, right? So I look at it, and he was like surprised. He was thinking maybe it's a dream, right? Then he called me up and then I woke up, I too checked, yes, the badge was real. 
So the top developer badge is given to people who do exemplary work on Google Play for constant innovation, constant attention to detail, and kind of like building high quality content. So when you're given this, we're like super excited, right? But the thing is, the following day, the entire app system crashed because we did not design it for handling such huge loads. Uh, but again, you stumble sometimes, you fall, you get back up, and then you, the show goes on. So the last two years, we have acquired more than 10 million users worldwide. And of the 10 million, 9.99 .9 million users have been all organic. So for people who don't understand what is organic, organic is like we don't spend anything on marketing, and all of these users just come and install the app. So in this modern day, when people are spending one to two dollars to get somebody to install an app, how did we manage to get 9.9 .9 million users to install it for free, right? Without any marketing, how do we do that? That is our fairy tale. So every fairy tale has a magic trick, right? What, what makes fairy tale special is this magic about it, right? So ours, the magic is based on two principles. The first one is don't build a product, build an experience. So it's easy to write it out in words. So our biggest, let's say, revelations were from our first mistake. The first thing that we did was a huge failure. That is one reason because we did not build a product that the people wanted. So the product was called Movie Tarot. We launched it in February 2013, I believe. So what it did is, it predicted the box office collection of a film that would come out, right? Uh, so we are just fresh out of college, and the biggest problem that we had in college was going to watch a film on first day for show, and then losing our money because it's crap. So we wanted to solve it. We wanted to, you know, if the film is worth it, that's the only reason why you wanted to watch it. So we would give out a prediction on Monday morning, telling this film, say, the uh, film that's going to release this weekend, how much amount of money it's going to get in the opening weekend, and what is the percentage of people who will go out watching the film, how many of them will like it. This was a huge PR-hyped product, right? We got covered by almost all the national dailies, we got written by magazines, we were in TV, we were giving interviews. The first two weeks was awesome. We were everywhere, we were in the limelight. But the third week, the installs started coming down. The fourth week, the product almost fizzled and died at 15,000 installs. Why? Because the Monday predictions had value only for four days. So the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and the Fridays, the reviews would come out, and prediction had no value because people had actually gone out and watched it, and they would come out in a you know, first-hand experience review. So a product, cool in terms of technology, but in terms of user experience, not that great. That is why we designed Cookbook. So Cookbook, with Cookbook, what we did is we designed it with user experience at the heart. As you can see, this is our app on the Android Wear, on the phone, on the tablet, on the Android TV. So whenever someone decides to cook, we want to be there to help him you know, in that process. Whether it be in his kitchen with this Android TV, whether it be with his watch, whether it be with his phone, whatever device he might have, we want to help that process. So as I said, we have 21 languages, right? So having English recipes is cool. But the problem is, suppose in India, you show English recipes with a lot of burgers and cheese sandwiches and pizza, right? What are the users going to do? They come up and then they're going to tell us, right? OK, uh, the app is cool and all, but see all the recipes that you have are like very British or very American. We're not going to use it. So what people really want in a political geography is like maybe tailored content, like the doshas, the idlis, the parathas. Now, that is what you know, Indians will buy, right? So what we do is we have tailored user experiences in every geography. So just for English, we have like five different sets of home pages that loads up differently in the US, in the UK, South Africa, Australia. So every country who loads the app up gets a different experience in terms of recipes. Now, in order to build a great experience for the user, you have to design certain processes, right? And these processes must be very powerful. Moving on to my next question. This is a screenshot that we use in Google Play. It is of searching for something on our app. How many of your designers here in the audience? Yeah, quite a few. So 
how much amount of time do you think making such a screenshot make or making such a creative would take how many minutes how many hours days what is the amount of time that somebody will take to make a creative like this go ahead shoot please yeah please 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 speak up there's no wrong answer it's all it's all right <laughs> a few days yeah then it might take a few days yes if you design from scratch the first time is going to take a few days because you design the layout you have to take the screenshots and all that then any other answers somebody who thinks we can do it quicker 10 seconds <laughs> hmm that might be difficult <laughs> so this is our screenshots for the phones on android right so there are eight screenshots for a language just for the phone So we are also on the tablet, the watch, and the TV, right? So we are looking at 14 screenshots for a language. So you have 21 languages. So when you do the math, you get somewhere around 294 screenshots. Let's say on average you took 10 minutes to make it. Okay? You're a super fast designer, blazing quick guy. You did it in 10 minutes flat, right? That's going to take you uh, roughly close to 3,000 minutes, I think. 300 screenshots, 10 minutes each, 3,000 minutes. that is like 49 hours is it so 49 hours straight that you have to work right just making screenshots so on an average let's say you work for 7 hours a day you'll take a week just to make the store listing is that even possible because you spent all your last two or three months building the app designing the app you spent so much time there you can't just spend one more week delaying the launch working on the screenshots that's not logical right but the problem is if you skip this part what is going to happen is nobody is going to find your app you know the beautifully designed app the great app that you built no one is going to discover it because the first thing that they see is this this is the gate you come on google play and this is the gate right someone has to open this gate download your app and then they'll see the experience that you build within the product so the gate is so so important Yes, but it's lo un like illogical to do seven days of photoshopping just to make screenshots. So what we did is we created certain droids. Let's say automated code. So our sketch droid, what it does is it generates all these screenshots automatically, right? So we take say ten minutes to code or like generate all the two hundred ninety four screenshots. Now the process is easy, right? You take it now. All the pain that you have left is like uploading all of them one by one. So Mr. Rajan Nandan, like the MD of Google, once told me, "You don't have to reinvent the wheel. The wheel has been invented. It's there. It's been there for a long time. All you have to do is adapt it. You know, add something extra to it to make it awesome for your need, right? If you want it to, you know, move super fast on ice, design a wheel with some extra things so that it can work that purpose, right? So the building the screenshot is something that you have to do. So it's there." So what you have to do is add your extra bit to it, create a process that can smooth line it, right? Streamline the process, make it faster, make it quicker. So all these processes are going to help you create that awesome experience for your user. Now let's say you build this great product, which is focusing on user experience. Then you build awesome underlying processes underneath it. It's all cool. What is next? The next is a beautiful world called patience. Now you wait, right? You wait in all honesty, believing that the magic will kick in sooner than later. It will kick in. So our magic moment happened one and a half years into Android. So we got invited to Google I/O last year. We were one of the very few people, very few app developers, who actually been showcased at the I/O. Last year, Mr. Timothy Jordan did a session about us, WhatsApp, and iHeartRadio at the event. At the I/O, it was a humbling experience, right? You meet. the like the best of the best on android there you know the app that you grew up with the the angry birds the games that you play super well all of those guys are there and you meet all of them and talk and then you're so happy to meet all these bubbly cheerful developers bubbly cheerful guys and then you get so much vibe but one thing that i felt really bad when i was at the ios there were very few indians 
for a country that has so many users in terms of android so many developers so much talent the number of people who are ibio from india was very limited almost every guy that we saw was either japanese or chinese and most of them thought like we are from a silicon valley we are from a valley based company and then we are there just for showcasing the product but we told them no we are from india we came here to represent india and this product that we have built so my team and myself would humbly like to request all of you there is so much potential out there and then if we can do it in one and a half years you can probably do it less than that because we did so many mistakes along the way so if you have so many role models to look up to you know the flip cards the mintras all are booming here right take you from all of those guys and then build something much much faster much much bigger i'd like to close out with this 90s kid story so how many 90s kids here oh quite a few so what i love about 90s kids is like we were there in the transition of technology right we used the floppy disks then we moved to the cd drives then we moved to the dvd drives then we moved to the pen drives we have seen the bulky huge crt monitors we have seen the tablets we have seen the laptops we have seen the iphones the entire transition you have seen it all when i was a kid and i was using internet yahoo was the biggest thing having a yahoo email id being on the yahoo messenger was the biggest thing it was like the coolest thing to do then everything they had astrology they had search they had music what not but in 2000s something else happened so google came along and these guys all they had was a text box and a button and i type in something and they'll send me to the right place right i search for information they'll send me to wikipedia i search for movies they'll send me to imdb i search for tickets they'll send me to book my show oh cool i get the best content and it's simple right so google owned the 2000s but now it's a bit different right even if i know i can actually search for a ticket in google i'd probably install the book my show app directly and buy a ticket from there or if i want to navigate using maps i'd probably install a nokia maps or a google maps i'd probably not search right so now is the era of the app revolution So what is the future going to be? It's going to be something where an information comes to you without you having to seek for it. Now it's like seekers find it, right? So 5 years down the lane it's going to be you don't have to seek. You want something you get it. So when we launched Reify in 2012 with our like couple of friends in my small bedroom and at home, our idea was this to create a platform where content comes to you. And probably the future of cooking would be vr maybe next year by next year people would be wearing those goggles and like you know you have vr exercises happening for cooking if that happens you'd probably want to be there too so it's all about two things building a great experience for the users and building powerful processes that can power these experiences thank you so much